Are you ready to do a varroa mite test? The varroa mite test is an important part of beekeeping. Whether you choose to treat or however you want to deal with varroa mites is up to you. But either way, I strongly encourage you to know what your mite levels are. That way there's no guessing as to whether a problem within your hive stems from varroa mites or from some other problem. So what a varroa mite test is, is you're taking half a cup of bees, which is a small sampling of the hive, and seeing how many mites are within that sampling. And that will give you an idea of how many mites are in the entire beehive. Now there are other ways to do varroa mite tests other than the one that I'm going to show you using rubbing alcohol. However, None of these other tests are as effective. You might hear about the sugar roll, sugar shake. They have different names for it, but it involves the word sugar in it. And this will give you a mite count, but that count is going to be lower than if you use rubbing alcohol. I say this with confidence because I have seen quite a bit of research from scientificbeekeeping.com, which is run by Randy Oliver, who is a biologist and has been keeping bees for many years, writes for a lot of the well-known beekeeping magazines, and he has done tests and he's tried to use other methods to count varroa mite infestations other than rubbing alcohol and has found that your mite level will be lower with a uh, like the, the results of your mite test will be lower if you use um, powdered sugar than if you use rubbing alcohol. So now I'm going to show you the supplies you need to do a mite test, how to make your mite test, and then we'll do a mite test together. And yes, all of the bees in your mite test will die, and it is not a pleasant thing to do, but you have to remember that all of these bees are working towards their hive staying alive and surviving. A bee will die if she stings, but she still stings without question as soon as she thinks that it is necessary and something that needs to be done for the hive. And so having a small amount of bees killed in order to get an accurate result for your mite test so that you can prevent your hive from suffering in my opinion, is way better than um, the fact that a, a small amount of bees will die. Now, you do this test once a month, and you can just take one hive. If you have more than one hive, you can just test one hive. And you don't want to do this test as soon as you get your bees. You want to wait until you have at least four frames of brood. And and that you're confident in, in your queen spotting skills because you do not want to put your queen in this test. Uh, but once uh, you've had your bees for a few months and your hive is getting stronger, this is something that you'll want to do monthly. In order to do your mite test, you're going to want a large bin. You know, it's one that's not gigantic, but big enough that you can take a frame of bees and shake it into the bin. Um, a five gallon bucket works okay, but is borderline a little too narrow. You want one with a wide enough container. And you know, you look a little crazy walking into Walmart with your frame, but I've done that before. I think when I got this bin, I just brought a frame with me into Walmart and walked around and found a size bin that seemed like a good bin to shake bees into. Other thing you want is a large bottle of rubbing alcohol, 70% or greater. You know, 70% is usually what you're going to find at the drugstore. You want a half cup measuring cup, and this has to be a half cup. You don't want like a full cup or two cups with a line for the half cup. You want it to be a measuring cup just for a half cup. And in case you see half cup measuring cups that aren't round, you want one that's round so that you can scoop these out of this container easily. You're going to want two 16 ounce plastic cups that are clear. Now, actually these are 12 ounce because my husband likes to get iced coffee. And so these are the cups I have. They have his name on the side. They work okay, but the 16 ounce cups um, make for a little bit less spilling when shaking your bees around. You're going to want a lid for your cup. So you can buy a container of these because you know these, these only last for 
a handful of tests before they will start to fall apart and you'll need more. But if you like to go to cafes and get a drink, just hold on to your cups. Then you're going to want a strainer plus a container to strain the liquid into. That's going to catch the liquid once you pour it over your strainer. This can be just a tea strainer. It can be as small as one of those little tea strainers over a jar. Or this is one that I already had. So this is just a strainer from my kitchen and a bowl that has a spout to make for easy pouring. Now, if your strainer has holes that are a little bit bigger you know the tea strainers those holes are very small but most strainers the holes aren't as small and so what i like to do for my strainer is just take a paper towel and put it over inside the strainer and so really what you're doing is you're pouring that rubbing alcohol that has mites in it over the strainer so you can count how many mites are in there. So if your the holes in your strainer are small enough, the row of mites will sit in the strainer and not fall through. If your strainer holes aren't large enough, then a paper towel makes it easier. I find even if you do have a small strainer, paper towel makes it easier to count everything. Um, but you know, not a necessity if you don't happen to bring one with you out in the bee yard once in a while. But you know, something that you probably already have in your kitchen, so you might as well make things easier for you. The other thing you need is tool, spelled T-U-L-L-E. -L -E. For those of you who aren't familiar with this, you can probably find it at any fabric store or the fabric section at Walmart. Now there's usually two different kinds of fabric that looks like this. One has very, very, very tiny little holes and one has holes this size. Um, you want to be able, you want the holes to be big enough that the row mites can fall through. You just don't want the bees to get through. Um, you can also use that cloth, the mesh, in your package of bees. If you bought a package of bees, you can cut that mesh part out and put that inside your cup instead. I find the tool a lot easier because it is um, very soft and you can just slide it in your cup. If you use the cloth from your package of bees, you're also going to need a small stapler. So to make this, you're going to need scissors to cut your tool. And you're going to need an X-Acto knife, mat knife, some kind of small knife to cut your cup. So what you're going to do is you're going to keep one cup just as is. You're going to take your second cup and you're going to cut off that very bottom little piece. Now on your cup, you're probably going to have a little indent on the bottom and that's you know that guideline so that you can make a nice straight cut so you're just going to cut along that line uh, so that one cup has a bottom and one cup doesn't have a bottom second thing you're going to do is take your tool and you want to cut off a pretty large piece a piece large enough that you can put it under your cup, put it inside your second cup so that they're stacked and the tool hangs off the edges. You want there to be an excess off the top. And if you use the mesh from your package of bees, what you're going to want to do is cut a circle that is a little bit larger than the bottom. You can use this as a guide. You're going to put it in the bottom and you're going to staple it to the bottom. So you can, um, what you wanna do is have the seam from the bottom of the mesh facing down, not facing up inside the cup or else bees will get stuck on it and you don't want bees to get stuck on this. Okay, it's time to do the mite test. First, before you open the beehive, you want to prepare your stuff so that you're ready. I have my bowl a strainer and paper towel inside sitting on this other beehive lid i have my half cup measuring cup smoker is going i have my cup inside a cup the lid is right here on the side for me to reach easily these things are clear, so if you don't have a table, make sure you put the lid somewhere safe so you're not struggling to find it. 
because once you put the bees in that cup, you want to put the lid on as soon as possible so more bees aren't flying in. I have my rubbing alcohol and I am going to pour. Uh, I'm going to fill the cup about halfway with the rubbing alcohol. You want there to be enough in there so that when you put the bees in, the rubbing alcohol comes a little bit higher up than the level of bees. So if you don't have enough in, that's fine. Just put more in later. You don't want to fill it up too high though, or else it'll be spilling out when you're jiggling the cup. I have my container and container is empty. I also have my directions and there's, you know, this isn't a test. You don't have to have this stuff memorized. You can just write it down print out the mite test PDF we have as a download right there on the right hand side and keep it with you. Or I like to have a binder for my beekeeping notes. You can put it in the binder. I've never done this, but it would be incredibly helpful for me since I keep bees in a very wet area to put them inside a plastic sleeve so that I don't have to keep on reprinting them out. But luckily I've remembered it well enough over the years that I don't need my directions with me. Put that on the side. So what we wanna do is open the beehive and pull out a frame that has a little bit of brood on it and um, bee bread, which is what we call that pollen mixed with nectar and shake the bees from that frame into your container. It's important to know what frame to take and what frame not to take. The, you're gonna have a higher mite level on the frames with brood. You're going to have a considerably lower mite level on the frames that are just honey. So that's why it's good to take a frame of brood that is on the outer section of that brood so that you get a idea of the, the average mite level. If you take a frame from the middle of your brood, so when you open up your beehive, the brood is usually in the center and you have food, the honey, on the outside of the box. So if you take a frame from the very middle of your box, it's probably going to have almost all brood and it's going to have a very high mite level. Now this is going to give you results and you're going to find lots of mites in your test most likely, but it's not going to be the average sampling. So if you want the average sampling, you want to take from the very edge of your brood. You know that first frame of brood, when you open your box, you're going to see a frame of honey and then you're going to see a frame of brood. Maybe you'll see a few frames of honey but then that first frame of brood is usually a good frame to sample from. Now, if you choose to sample from the middle of your brood section or a frame that's just covered in brood, that's okay. But the next time you do your mite test, take the same kind of frame. Because if you do a mite test one week and you sample a frame of honey, the next week you're sampling a frame of some brood and some bee bread and some honey. The next week you take a sampling of the middle of your brood box, you're going to get different results. And it's not gonna give you an accurate portrayal of how your rural mite infestation is increasing over the months. Because again, we're not trying to see just if we have an infestation and we need to treat or not. We're trying to see how the levels of varroa mites change month to month. Because that will give you an idea of what it'll be in three or four months from now. Just, not just what it's going to be like um, in, in two weeks. So it's important to know where you want to take your sampling from. Now don't get too, too worried about is this the frame that's the perfect frame or not. It's, it's okay. It's, this isn't, you know, life or death here. But um, the best thing to do is to take a frame of brood from the uppermost brood box. So if your hive is two boxes, the first box is probably almost all brood, maybe two frames of honey and pollen. Second box is going to be like half brood, half honey and pollen. So if you have two brood boxes, you're going to take a sampling from the uppermost brood box. If your hive is three, four boxes, you're going to take the honey boxes off 
and you're going to pull a frame out from that first box of brood that you, you hit, working from the top down. If you have just one box on your beehive and your hive is just one box, you're gonna take a frame from that box because that's the only box you got. If you have a package of bees, if you just bought a nuke, if you only have two or three frames of brood, maybe even just four with not that many bees on the frames, do not do a mite test. It's, um, it's going to be a little bit too much to take that many bees from the hive. Uh, there are other ways to see if you have an infestation that won't um, be so taxing on the hive. If you are comfortable enough to not wear gloves during this time, um, this is a time that I really find it difficult to wear gloves while beekeeping. At the very least, while you're doing the mite test, I encourage you to take your gloves off for that point. If you're not comfortable doing that, don't. Or what some beekeepers do is they'll wear um, the disposable gloves. The nitrile gloves um, are, are pretty good and fairly sting resistant. And that's kind of, it, it'll give you um, a little bit better use of your fingers um, than, than those thick beekeeping leather gloves. You're going to want to take your smoker and smoke the hive first. You want the bees to be calm, especially if you're not wearing gloves. This first box is a honey super. So I'm not going to even bother with this first box. I'm just going to take it off. Now that we are in the second box of the hive, which is the higher brood box. I'm going to start to pull out the frames. See what frame we can use for the mite test. And some beekeepers like to pull from a couple frames and you can do that too if you like. See that this frame here is all honey. So we're going to leave that. See that this frame here has got a bunch of bee bread on it in the corner uh, and is mostly honey. So that actually would be a good frame because the bee bread is going to be visited by the nurse bees and we want to sample from the nurse bees. But it also has honey on it so we'll get some bees that aren't nurse bees as well. So what I'm going to do is put this frame on the side. I'm going to make sure that no other frames are sitting out of the beehive with brood on them because you don't want to harm the brood by leaving it out of the beehive for too long while you're doing your mite test. Okay, so we have our frame of bees. You can wear gloves for this part if this part makes you a little nervous. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our frame of bees and we're going to shake them into the bin. Before we do that, check for the queen. You want to do a really good check for the queen. Both sides, any little crevices she could hide on, on the sides of the frame. And if you are having difficulty spotting the queen in general in your hive, or maybe you've never seen the queen in your beehive, go through the queen spotting video, um, write down those steps one by one, and first make sure that you know how to spot the queen. Spot the queen at least a few times in your hive before doing one of these mite tests, because you really do not want to kill your queen bee. And if you're still having trouble, you can email me. My email is in the notes below this video and I can help you out. Um, you can contact your local bee association, see if anybody nearby is willing to let you shadow them for a day, for an hour, and they can help you and you can see, they can point it out. Usually, if you're having trouble spotting the queen, it just takes somebody to point her out to you for you to be like, oh, okay. Don't forget to take the queen spotting quiz 
and make sure that you know how to find the queen before doing your mite test. So what we're going to do is pick the frame up, make sure our thumbs are on the top of the bars, our pointer finger is underneath the ear of the bar, pick the frame up and bring it down very fast. Don't be, don't be weak about this. You want to be quick about it. Doing it um, not as fast is going to be worse for the bees than doing it fast. Okay, so one, two, three. Next, what you do is give the bees a few seconds. They're gonna be bees flying out. And those bees are going to be the older bees. And this is how you separate the bees according to age. You let the older bees fly out and the younger bees, those nurse bees, will stay in the bin a lot longer. This is also a good time to do one more quick check to see if you see the queen. Next, what we're going to do is take the bin and we're going to hit it on one corner so most of the bees fall down to that corner and then scoop the bees into our cup. Level off the cup if needed. And pour them into your cup. When you're done, put the lid on it. After you're done that, tap your container. So the bees still in your container, go back into the hive, put your frame back in. We're going to close up the hive before we have finished our test. Okay, so we have our half a cup of bees and our cup of rubbing alcohol. The level of rubbing alcohol should be a little bit higher than the level of bees. If there isn't, pour some more in. Then you want to put the lid on top. And we are going to shake this cup for about 30 seconds. Now, what you want to do when shaking it is hold it down and you want to not really shake it, but actually you want there to be almost like a tornado of bees inside the cup. You want to make sure that all the bees are moving, which is why you want a cup that's clear. And you want to do this for 30 seconds. And we're going to take the inner cup out. Make sure you hold on to the tool so that the bees don't fall out. Now we're going to pour this over the strainer. We're going to look inside and see if we see any mites. Hold it up close. Tell that this is a mite and this is a mite. Other things are just little specks. Way to tell if it's a, a mite but not a speck. The mites are a reddish brown color. If you look at them really close up, you can see they're their little legs. Now that you have your mite test results, it's time to figure out what you should do about it. So overall, if your results are one or zero, amazing, great, you don't have to do anything. If you have a result of 12 or greater, you have to treat. It doesn't matter if there's honey on the hive or not, you should put a treatment in. Uh, 15 is the rate at which they start getting a lot of viruses and 45 is the rate at which they are usually absconding which is when the entire hive takes off and you're left with with nobody uh, which is different from swarming when you're left with uh, about half of your hive now with the, uh, keeping those levels in mind if it is springtime you want to treat even if your mite level is say two or three 
and that's because you want to prevent an infestation in the summer when honey is coming in because ultimately your goal is to not have to put a treatment in when the bees are gathering lots of honey which is usually the late spring and early summer so if you're treating and saying uh, doing a mite test in say March and they have a level of two you might want to put a treatment in because the level is two in March but it might be five in April or May it might be getting to seven or ten come July and then it's creeping up to unhealthy levels in the summertime it's okay if your mite level could be uh, five or six the time you want to start to be worried is if you're getting uh, between the levels of 7 to 12 because that's when they can start to get really sick and it doesn't matter if there's honey coming in you need to treat anyway but if you have like you know below 7 or 8 things you can do to help them deal with the mites is to freeze whatever drone comb you can find even if it's a little section cut it out and freeze it you just want to make sure that it is capped you don't want the drone cells with eggs and larvae in them. You want them to be capped because that's where a lot of the varroa mites live. But again, if you have really high mite levels, um, especially over 12, you're going to want to put a treatment in no matter if you um, have honey coming in or not. You just need to check the next video because that's what we'll be talking about what kind of treatments to use when and what to do if you have honey on your hive when you need to treat. So late summer comes and you've harvested your honey. If you have a mite level over two or three, I would put a treatment in. This is a really crucial time for the beehive. The queen is laying the eggs for those winter bees and they need to be healthy and not have viruses. If they have viruses, they might not be able to survive the winter. And then again in the fall, uh, right before you close up your hive, this is also a time that you might want to treat unless you have a level of zero or one because you really want there to be no mites when you close up this hive or else they will again cause your hive to collapse. So the, from the late summer to when you're closing up your hive for winter, these are times when you want to have no more than a mite level of zero or one. If it's two or greater, you want to do a treatment to prevent problems in the winter time that will cause your hive to collapse. In the early spring, again, you don't have to treat in the early spring, but if you want to prevent an infestation in the summer when all the honey's coming in, put a treatment in then as well. The summertime, when there's lots of food coming in, that's when you can allow a much higher mite level and do some of the integrated pest management techniques I talk about in the next lesson to help you naturally keep mites low until it comes to a time when you can put a treatment in again. I know this isn't a very simple answer. I wish I could give you a number and say treat or not don't treat, but this is nature and there are variables.